Good evening, I'm Scott Beadle with St. George News at 8. An Ogden couple faces child pornography charges following an FBI investigation. 32-year-old Jason David Lott is charged with distribution of and possession of child pornography and possession of a firearm following a felony conviction. Lott is a registered sex offender following a 2009 conviction for exploitation of a minor. He faces a mandatory minimum 15-year sentence and up to 40 years if convicted. His wife, 22-year-old Camilla Mae Bergeson, is charged with possession of child pornography. She faces up to 20 years in prison if convicted. On March 16th, an online search on the BitTorrent network led an FBI special agent to Lott and Bergeson's home. The two admitted to having viewed child pornography. Lott remains in prison while Bergeson is on supervised release. A four-day trial is scheduled for May. The increased efforts of federal agents, local poli police departments, and task forces has led federal prosecutors to file 15 firearms cases in St. George so far this year. Interim Utah U.S. Attorney John W. Huber says agencies have stepped up efforts to target individuals who are prohibited by federal law from having firearms. He says most of the defendants this year already have prior felony convictions. Many are also facing charges for possession of drugs. The Southern Utah Pacific Islander Coalition announces the third annual MANA Recognition Awards and Dinner. Held on Wednesday at the Courtyard by Marriott, this event will recognize, honor, and celebrate those Pacific Islanders in our community who are making a difference. These awards help emphasize the unique mission and objective of the Southern Utah Pacific Islander Coalition to promote health, youth development, education, and artistic, ethnic, and cultural preservation. The St. George Eye Center and University of Utah Healthcare Morin Eye Center are offering Southern Utah residents an opportunity to get their sight back for free. Operation Sight provides those who are uninsured or otherwise unable to afford it a chance for free cataract surgery. The program is offered semi-annually and provides one pre-operation appointment, cataract surgery, and one post-operation appointment for approved participants. The next surgeries take place April 27th and 28th at the St. George Surgical Center. To apply, contact the St. George Eye Center at 435-628-4507. Dixie State University adds two new majors, two new minors, and a new business center. The Technology, Innovation, and Entrepreneurship Center, or TIE Center for short, will be housed in DSU's Innovation Plaza. It will support students and faculty who are focused on researching, patenting, and developing new marketable products and viable companies. Students also have two new major options, a Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science in Applied Sociology and a Bachelor of Science in Bioinformatics. Two new minors have also been added to the list, Photography and Graphic Design. In addition, DSU's Department of Media Studies is approved to add an emphasis in broadcasting to its media studies degree. Trump allies are jumping on a new report alleging wrongdoing by the Obama administration when it comes to intelligence gathering. The former administration is saying, though, nothing illegal happens. And Jared Kushner, the president's senior advisor and son-in-law, is having high-profile meetings overseas. Maggie Rooley is in Washington with more. The Trump administration continues to dispute and downplay revelations that Russia interfered in last year's election. There is a troubling uh, direction that some of this is going in. The president retweeting that the real story to follow is a new report claiming former President Obama's national security advisor Susan Rice may have improperly disclosed or unmasked the names of Trump associates whose conversations were picked up by U.S. intelligence agencies. If there were incident, incidental collections, as a result of transition meetings with people being surveilled, I want to know why their names were unmasked. If it was political, that's wrong. But these allegations are not quite the smoking gun many Trump allies claim. On MSNBC, Rice says nothing illegal happened and it was all part of her job. I leaked nothing to nobody and never have and never would. And more names being revealed as the probe widens. ABC News has learned a Trump campaign associate, Carter Page, was targeted for recruitment by Russian spies in January of 2015. Page tells ABC he felt the feds unmasked him back then, even though he cooperated in the case. This as Jared Kushner remains in Iraq. The White House senior advisor and presidential son-in-law making the trip even before the president's own Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. On top of his trip to Iraq, Kushner has his hands full. Among other things, he is running the Office of American Innovation 
and planning this week's visit by the Chinese president. Russian police say the man they think blew himself up on a St. Petersburg subway car yesterday may have had ties to radical Islamists. One official said it's believed the suspect carried a bomb in a backpack onto the train. Fourteen people were killed in that attack. Meteorologist Kim Walker has your Southern Utah forecast right after this. The weather tonight is brought to you by Experimac. Experience Mac computers in a new way. Good evening, everyone. We enjoyed a pretty nice day out there. We are going to continue with our warming trend as we head into tomorrow. Mostly sunny conditions. It will be pleasantly warm, warmer than today. We're going to say dry, and we're going to actually warm up on Thursday. Then there will be another system coming our way by Friday, and so those clouds will start to increase, and we could see our chances of rain starting late Friday and lasting into a good part of your Saturday. Right now, though, we have high pressure building into the region. It's keeping us dry and it's going to help us warm up as we make our way to the next uh, couple of days, especially with the sunshine returning that will help to bump temperatures up. So here's a look at your forecast. Temperatures will be around 27 degrees, very cold in Cedar City. And then we climb up to around 49 degrees at noon. Our high will be around 62 degrees and we'll stay there through your five o'clock hour with a mostly sunny sky. As we make our way into uh, St. George, just a little bit to the south, temperatures will start off a little bit on the chilly side, 41 degrees degrees at 7 o'clock and then we climb up to around 53 degrees for your lunch hour. 73 will be our afternoon high and then we drop down to around 70 degrees under a mostly a sunny sky and that's all compliments of high pressure in control of our weather. Today not a bad day. We actually warmed up from yesterday. 64 was the high in a St. George set 48 degrees in Cedar City. Beaver was 47 degrees so it's a little bit cooler just to our north and hurricane. It was 62 and uh, as we made our way to the west it was a little bit warmer, 70 degrees in Mesquite. Here's a look at your forecast tonight. It will be chilly in Cedar City as we will be below freezing, 25 degrees for our overnight low, 38 degrees in St. George and also in Hurricane in Mesquite. Expect temperatures around 43 degrees. And then for tomorrow, we're going to see plenty of sunshine, dry weather once again, and that will help to warm us up. So our high to the north will be a little bit cooler, 62 degrees in Cedar City, 73 degrees in St. George. 70s in Mesquite and also in Hurricane. And then as we make our way into the next seven days, we are going to see a little bit more cloud cover on Thursday, though. It's going to be warming up 70 degrees for Cedar City, so it's going to be pleasantly warm out there. And then we drop down a little bit as those clouds start to thicken on your Friday. Highs will be around 65 degrees, mostly cloudy conditions. And then we do have chances of rain late Friday into Saturday. That can last into Sunday as well, possibly even some snow mixed into it as temperatures will be dropping down into the 30s, but our afternoon high will be around 51 degrees, and I think we'll dry out by early next week. Temperatures will remain cool with a high around uh, 53 degrees on Monday and 52 on Tuesday. Here's your forecast for St. George. We warm up to around 80 degrees or 81 degrees for your Thursday, a little bit more cloud cover, and then those clouds will continue to increase on Friday with a high around 77 degrees. A little bit cooler on your Saturday because we are expecting some isolated showers across the area. We'll stay in the 60s through the end of the weekend, but we are going to dry out by Sunday. Dry conditions through Monday, and it looks like we could see a few more showers on Tuesday with a high around 67 degrees. So we're going to see a nice warm up in the next couple of days before the rain gets back. Very in nice rest of the work week. Yeah, yeah, can't can't beat it. Thanks, Kim. All right. Up next, the gym is getting its members fit and tipsy. Check out why the owners think mixing drinks and exercise might help get more people to the gym. Some people are getting fit and tipsy at one New York City gym. Lifetime Athletic has added beer and wine to the menu for those who have just finished their workout. A physical trainer there says they're offering booze, not because its members are more likely to feel they've earned it. They say it's for their clients to form social bonds, creating a community that the gyms today are striving to establish. Thanks for watching and have a great night.